Hey everyone, welcome back to Basic Kitch Cooking where we are just a bunch of basic kitches. No professionals here, no fancy knife skills, just people who love to cook and eat. I would greatly appreciate if you would help a basic kitch out by liking this video and subscribing to this channel since it is just starting out and I think starting next week I will be doing a two video a week schedule. In today's video, I'm showing you my favorite Filipino chicken adobo recipe. Now, a lot of this recipe is traditional and some parts of it are definitely not traditional. This is just my favorite way to make it. Don't forget to check out the description box where all the ingredient amounts and information will be listed. Now, let's just jump right into it. We're going to start off by making the amazing sauce. I could literally bathe in this stuff. That would be disgusting, but I could. <laughs> We're going to start off with three tablespoons of brown sugar. Next up, we need a half cup of soy sauce. Now I'm using a Thai soy sauce here, but just use whatever soy sauce you have on hand. If you have a Filipino soy sauce, even better. Now I'm going in with a half cup of rice vinegar. And again, it's quarantine time, so if you don't have rice vinegar but you have white vinegar, go ahead and use that. Now I'm going in with a quarter cup of mirin, which is like a sweet cooking rice wine. If you don't have it, you can leave it out, but I think it adds something really nice to this sauce. This is what mirin looks like. This is the one I use if you haven't seen it before. This is totally optional, but I'm doing a tablespoon of dark soy sauce, which adds more of a sweetness, not so much saltiness, and it gives a beautiful dark color to the sauce, since the first soy sauce I used was a rather light soy sauce. Next, I'm adding in a tablespoon of fish sauce. I use Three Crabs brand fish sauce. It is so amazing, adds such amazing flavor to things. I will use it in pasta sauces, dipping sauces, salad dressings. It just adds that umami and flavor. It is time to add garlic, and garlic is an absolute must in this recipe. I thinly sliced about half of a head of garlic for this. Give it a good mix and really get that brown sugar from the bottom incorporated with the sauce. I felt the sauce needed to be thinned out a little bit, so I'm just adding a couple tablespoons of water here. Pepper is another important ingredient here. I'm adding one teaspoon into my mortar and pestle. Now, a lot of times whole peppercorns are added to this sauce or people just use like, you know, finely ground pepper. I like it in the middle, just a little bit crushed up. And this is just about where I like it. Final steps, I promise, we are just adding the pepper into the sauce. Mix it well. Another important ingredient is bay leaves, and I am adding three bay leaves to this. And that is it for the sauce that the chicken is going to cook in. Finally, let's get cooking. I am adding just way too much oil. I did not need that much. Just add in a little bit of oil because we need to brown off the chicken. I'm using a Dutch oven because the chicken is primarily going to cook in the oven, but if you don't have something that can go from your stovetop to your oven, you can just brown the chicken in a pan and then move it over into a baking dish. For this recipe, for me, bone-in is a must, plus it's actually the meat that's easiest for me to find during quarantine. I'm using skin-on, bone-in chicken thighs. I have used chicken leg quarters for this recipe. I have used ribs for this recipe. It is all amazing. We want it to be really hot because we want a really good sear. I had to do this in two batches because I have five very large thighs. Once the skin is crispy and golden brown, go ahead and remove them and place them off to the side. What I did was remove all that excess oil and chicken fat. I just poured it off into a bowl because we'll actually use that to fry up eggs later. Now we need to just add all of our chicken back in. And always add back in all of the resting juices from when they were set aside. I gave the sauce one final good mix to make sure no brown sugar was stuck to the bottom, and now I'm adding it to our chicken. 
I am totally extra. You do not need to do this or need to find this ingredient. I have a kefir lime tree and the leaves just give off such a citrus flavor. It's used a lot in Thai cooking and I just love adding it to the sauce because that citrus aroma goes so well with this sauce. It is definitely not traditional or necessary. You can even use lime zest. Just don't use lime juice. Cooking lime juice can make things bitter. Lime juice can always be added at the end. I have a basic hitch, so I'm closing the lid to my faux cruze and putting it in the oven for one hour at 350. At about 30 minutes, I took the chicken out so I could baste it with those juices. Then put the lid on and pop it back in the oven for another 30 minutes. During the last 30 minutes of cooking is the perfect time to get your sides and your toppings ready. I started cooking my jasmine rice. I cut up my green onions. I love jalapeno on this. I sliced my limes. Also cilantro is amazing on this. Anything you have that you feel would be great on this, just prep it now. Remember that oil and chicken fat we poured off? We're going to use that because it is flavor to fry the eggs. I love topping anything with a fried egg. Is it traditional? Not really, but can a fried egg hurt? Never. I just add pepper to my eggs since the sauce itself is going to be very salty. After one hour, my chicken was perfectly cooked through and fork tender. So just check your chicken after an hour to make sure it is done. So what I'm doing here is removing the chicken and putting it off to the side because I do like to reduce down the sauce a bit. How far you reduce the sauce is totally personal preference. I like to keep it thin enough to where all of the rice can get some sauce, but because there's so much sugar in the sauce, you can reduce it down to a very sticky, thick sauce. For me, this is where I like it. When I do ribs though, I go much thicker. All you have to do is just add your chicken back to the sauce and look how beautiful that is. I love to top it here with some green onions. Then a good squeeze of fresh lime juice. Chicken and adobo is so good over jazz and rice. I like to sprinkle some thinly sliced jalapenos on top for a nice little kick. Some extra green onions. And then a bunch of that adobo sauce. Don't forget to top it with your fried egg. That is it for the video, guys. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I really hope you try this recipe out. I'm going to end you guys off with a beautiful egg yolk popping shot, because who doesn't love that?